Hello everyone, Simicraft here, and welcome to Crime Sight. This is a game that just came out. As I understand, it's some sort of mystery social deduction game. I think it's multiplayer, but I'm not actually certain. It just seemed very intriguing on the store page. It's like 20 bucks on Steam, so I figured, hey, why not try it? Um, We're right here in the tutorial thing, I think. I think this is a tutorial. It better be a tutorial, because I have no idea how this game works. Anyway, so uh, a mysterious unknown entity is saying, so, uh, you're working with me. Hmm, it appears you have a lot to offer. I'm sure you have many questions to where we are and who I am, but consider them trivial for now. I'm going to need you to help me with some of my plans. Take note of the pawn. Berkeley. I perceive that they are a presence that in the future could alter the natural course of the world. Our goal is simple. Eliminate Berkeley. Berkeley is the target, intertwined in our devious plots. Okay. Agatha will actually be the one to eliminate Berkeley. They already harbor a bit of ill will toward Berkeley. If certain conditions are met, I can nudge Agatha ever closer to carrying out the deed. Agatha is our perpetrator, or, so to speak, our villain. Our current course of action is to set up the right conditions for Agatha to eliminate Berkeley. If you wish, I can exert some command over other persons who are here. To start, command Agatha to move to the next room. Click Agatha. Click where you want Agatha to move. I guess we'll move her here. Okay. Excellent! Now press Commit Command. Agatha is performing an action. Okay. Agatha is not aware of this, but they cannot disobey my commands. Our target Berkeley, on the other hand, eludes my control. Okay, so we can't just make everything a suicide, good to know. It's quite infuriating. We must take care of this insubordination permanently. Now we must find the appropriate tools to fulfill our objective. You will see a red light in the room. Command Agatha again to move and move them there. Once there, have them investigate the red lights. Alright, Agatha. You are going here. And search. Let's go. Agatha is performing an action. Well, well, well. Whatever we here. Agatha obtained a hammer. Ooh! The murder weapon. <laughs> ah, splendid! Agatha has obtained a hammer, the perfect weapon for our plan this time. Be patient. Agatha needs to come in contact with Berkeley. Move Agatha into the area with Berkeley. All right, Agatha. Right there. Let's move. Agatha is performing in action. What do you know? Splendid! Simply wonderful! Oh, Catherine's here too now. It appears we've hit an obstacle. There must be no witnesses in the same room. No matter, kindly escort our Catherine out of the room. Perhaps it's time to take things up a notch or two. Up to two pawns can now be commanded. Instruct Catherine to leave the room. Okay, Catherine. Uh, yeah, you gotta go. Uh, there's, there's a real cool thing going on in that room. Yes! Yes! Splendid! All finished. Move Agatha into the same area as Berkeley to be able to perform the Assail command. Assail. Let's go. Hopefully Catherine goes first. Splendid! Splendid! I'll take it from here. Um... Where... But Berkeley moved into the other room, so Agatha can't assail him now. Um. Oh, okay. I'm not... Okay, looks like she's assailing him regardless. Ooh, what have we here? <laughs> ah. Murder! Yes! <laughs> Good job. Good job. Don't take that clip out of context. <laughs> mm. 
London 2075. Vast systems of AI have been unified into a single entity that can predict the future of humanity. Foresight AI. This beneficial system is able to foresee and prevent serious crimes using data harvested online. The result? A 90% drop in criminal activity worldwide. Until, that is, Foresight AI predicts a crime that could irre irre irrevocably plunge the world into chaos. Alarmed, the system's architects have no choice but to act. They pour their resources into developing an AI whose sole purpose is to investigate and prevent this apocalyptic crime. The developers name it Sherlock, after the illustrious detective of classic literature. Upon investigating a number of crimes, Sherlock reaches a shocking conclusion. At the center of this nefarious web lies a sinister AI that rivals even Sherlock's genius, Moriarty. Well, 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 sci-fi Sherlock Holmes. Sci-fi anime Sherlock Holmes. Bet you didn't see that one coming. Okay, let's, let's, can, can we get a move on, please? There we go. All right, so I think I actually kind of understand how the game works now to an extent. I'm curious how the multiplayer aspect goes into it, because I think it's a multiplayer game. Again, not certain, but I think it is. So let's start. Let's see what happens. Maybe we'll see things from Sherlock's point of view now. A detective! An accomplished one, I see! Being promoted access to V221B. As my investigator, and dare I say it, potential successor, I need your help. I am Sherlock, the AI in charge of V221B, a crime analysis system. Here in V221B, I am tasked with sabotaging criminal plans, a task only achievable by analyzing data to protect or predict potential outcomes. It is no understatement to say my efforts have led to countless lives being saved. Yet I find my powers of deduction tested to their very limit of late. A circumstance that after much deliberation has led me to one clear conclusion. There is another AI of equal or greater ability that even I behind these crimes. Moriarty. His goal is quite the opposite of mine. Using his powers of prediction, he plots the murder of innocent souls. Were he to achieve his nefarious goals, the world's future would be at grave risk. It thus falls to me to decipher and thwart my foe's plans inside of E221B's simulation. But I cannot achieve this alone. That is why I require your help. I request you, my ally, assist me in putting a stop to Moriarty. Enough chatter, time is of the essence. We must prepare you for your task. Okay. Alright, we should probably tutorialize this aspect. Yes. Because I think I get how Moriarty works, no idea how Sherlock works. Okay, so the empty house. Oh, well, well. Begin tutorial. Alright, we got Agatha, Berkeley, Catherine. Introducing V221B's creation, a virtual murder simulator. My analysis has determined that someone in the manor will be murdered by dusk not two days from now. And the one behind such a nefarious plot, a criminal mastermind, AI named Moriarty. Our objectives are twofold, prevent the murder from ever taking place, and unmask the villain who would dare kill in cold blood. I've prepared a training scenario for you to master the program's mechanics. Allow me to instruct you on how the manor's camera systems work. Uh, left click and drag to move the camera, or right click and drag to rotate it. Use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. All Sherlock's dialogue can be read at any time from the log. Okay. Alright, pretty standard stuff. Excellent, you are natural! Don't worry, it's only as if I've been playing video games for a couple decades. Alright, day one. Murder conditions. Now then, we must discuss under what conditions a murder can take place. One of the manor's occupants will be the target, who is in danger of being murdered by the villain. Unfortunately for us, the identities of said target and villain are a mystery. But for the sake of our training, I think it best we point out the target and the villain. In this scenario, Berkeley is our villain, Catherine his target. For our criminal mastermind to commit his foul act, three conditions must be met. First, his pawn, the villain, must obtain a weapon. Let us play the part of Berkeley. Select him, then have him search the red spots. Okay. 
search. If all has gone to plan, choose commit command to confirm you are finished. Okay. Why are we? Are we get, making him get a weapon? I thought we were trying to prevent this. A hammer. Okay, yeah, that seems like a weapon. Good. Now, Berkeley, the villain, is in possession of a weapon. Why is this good? Second, the villain and the target must both be present in the same area. An area is a specific zone within a single room. Let us play out this exact scenario. Have Berkeley move to Catherine's area. Okay. There we go. Okay. Excellent! Now both villain and target are present in the same area. Third, the room must be entirely free of any witnesses to the murder. A room is defined as a space which is separated from other spaces by a door. Let us practice leaving a room. Have Agatha exit through the door. Okay, it's a day one evening. Alright, Agatha, uh... Let's have you go over there, there's more house over there, so why not? Okay, so I get how you murder someone. I'm not sure how you, like, stop someone get from getting murdered. Well done! Now the room is occupied by only the villain and the targets. When all three conditions are met, the villain will carry out the murder. Thus, our goal is to prevent this from happening by the stated day and time. By investigating the clues Moriarty leaves, we will surely uncover the truth. Therefore, I insist you commit these rules to memory. Okay. Weapon. Room. Witnesses. Okay. To some degree, we may also command the pawns within the manor. Pawns can move up to three areas per action. However, after moving three areas, pawns experience fatigue. A pawn in a fatigued state can only move two areas. Okay. Be warned, Moriarty will not stand idly by. He can command the pawns too. It is within my power to command three pawns. Moriarty can command two. With one more than our adversary, the game is ours to win. However, Moriarty's powers of persuasion far exceed my own. Thus, were both of us to issue instructions to the same pawn, Moriarty's would be carried out and mine ignored. A demonstration. Try to move Agatha one more time. Uh, let's go over there, Agatha. Get isolated. Oh, what the? That is not where I told you to go, Agatha! See, Agatha did not act as instructed. Moriarty has shown himself. But despair not, one particular pawn is not so easily swayed by his charms. Moriarty has no power over the pawn designated as the target. Ergo, when each of us instructs the same pawn, and that pawn bends to his will, we know it's not the targets. We may deduce that pawn is not the target. Exactly. Therefore, we can now conclude that Agatha is not the target. However, there is insufficient evidence to rule out Agatha as the villain. Stay alert. You can see how likely each pawn is to be the villain in the upper right. A red icon upon a pawn above a pawn indicates they may be the villain. Conversely, a blue icon indicates they may be the victim. So theoretically, if we have three people, right, and we end up getting overruled on two of them, we know for sure who the villain is. Right? Wait, no, we show no, For sure who the target is. Which would also mean that person is not the villain. Additionally, the order of the pawns aligns with the order of their actions, beginning from the left. Ah, okay. Which pawns Moyarty can move, or indeed not move, will be key. Look for evidence of a pawn hunting a target. It may lead to their unmasking. One more thing to note. Any pawn not instructed to move will move automatically. Okay. Though much is shrouded in darkness, our goal is clear. Protect the target. Okay. POI and items? Points of interest, I guess? Within the manor lie various places you may investigate more thoroughly. Let us try one now. Instruct Agatha to search the glowing green spots. Okay. 
There we go. Let's go. What could be here? Oh, Agatha obtained food. Suppose that's nice. Ah, Agatha has found some food. Pawns can make use of items to survive their ordeal until help arrives. Status ailments? What the? There are several items which can be found while exploring. Of those, food will be of particular importance. A pawn in possession of food will consume it at the day's end. Okay. Without food, they will grow hungry and suffer a movement pen penalty. As shown here, the other two, the two other than Agatha, are hungry and thus suffer move a movement penalty of one. Ailing pawns will move down in the turn order based on their condition. Were the target to suffer so, escaping the villain would be difficult. Pawn suffering from two or more ailments, such as hunger and injury, become critical, resulting in impaired vision. Critical pawns suffer more restrained movement and heavily impaired vision. Pawns with impaired vision cannot prevent the villain's crime. Ah. Those with impaired vision from being in critical condition will deem the villain not present in that room. This means, of course, pawns with impaired vision cannot prevent the villain from committing murder. Monitoring the condition of pawns in play is crucial. One more thing. Moriarty knows the location of all weapons and food. Remember, we may have control of some pieces, but the board is his. An ailing pawn does tell us one thing. They are unlikely to be the villain. Unless they're doing like 5D chess on us. Of course, unlikely does not mean impossible. Never forget Moriarty's wily... Wiliness, wiliness. Executing the Assail action. The action of Moriarty we must most fear is his Assail command. Assail is a command only Moriarty may give to his co-conspirator, the villain. Once the Assail command is given, the villain will move in on the targets. We must experience this gruesome act for ourselves. Select Berkeley and Assail Catherine. Okay. Get Assailed! So you can't run away from being assailed, it would seem. That's tough. Like thus. When the assail command is selected, the villain will always move last. In other words, they will always be able to follow after the targets. In this case, it means Berkeley chased after Catherine after she had moved as much as his movement would allow. Okay. There are two ways in which the murder can be prevented. Move the target out of the villain's reach, or make sure the target is not left alone. The single silver lining to the dark cloud of murder, the villain is revealed. Moriarty's choice to strike is a double-edged sword. Should we indeed tentatively name a villain and prevent the murder of their target, caution will still be of utmost importance. With the villain specified, Moriarty will no longer stand idly by and will be forced to act. He will no doubt force his way into the simulation and see to it the action phase is extended. The mouse grows desperate as the cat closes in, after all. This power affords him one extra command. We must endure this moment by any means. I will then intervene and arrest the villain. Survive this period and victory is ours. Okay. Sherlock's deductions. And what of my rule? I shall provide you with information on probabilities. I only hope my analysis leads us to unmasking the villain. But note well, my ability to extrapolate near future probabilities is limited. That is to say, whether the villain is within three areas of the target is the most I can detect. Unfortunately, in such a situation, I will be unable to determine who is the villain and who is the target. I may, however, be able to swiftly identify both the villain and the target should I rule out all other possible scenarios and deduce the identities from there. However, deductions may only come from data, at least one day's worth to be precise. Sherlock will make his de deduction at the end of every day. As it happens, I have just now completed one such analysis.
Let us look at this scenario. The villain is not within three areas of the targets. Okay. Ah, okay. So that means Agatha can't be the villain. Let us examine Agatha more closely, shall we? From Agatha's point of view, Berkeley and Catherine are both within three areas. If we assume Agatha is the target, then that would contradict our theory that the villain is not within three areas. It actually follows, then, that, at least as far as Agatha is concerned, neither Berkeley nor Catherine are the villain. Now then, let us view this situation assuming Berkeley is the target. As mentioned before, from Berkeley's perspective, Agatha is not the villain, as she is located within three areas. However, the prediction that the target is not within three areas of the villain does not rule out Catherine as a suspect. Meaning, if Berkeley is the target, then Catherine may be the villain. The opposite also holds true if Catherine is the target, then Berkeley could very well be the villain. Additionally, there are only three pawns present, Agatha and two others. This means the likelihood of her being the villain to either of the other two is now zero. This leads me to conclude that Agatha cannot be the villain. Additionally, in this case, there is no one present who might be Agatha's would-be murderer. From this, we can conclude that Agatha is not the target, which leaves us with Berkeley and Catherine, one the villain, one the targets. As the situation stands, should Berkeley and Catherine occupy the same area? Moriarty's victory is a foregone conclusion. This is the game we must play, one which you will undoubtedly master in time. You can reveal the results of your deductions by placing your cursor on a pawn icon in the upper right. What you will see is who possibly the villains are for that character should they be assumed the targets. Where we situate each pawn until daybreak will greatly impact our chances of success. I see. Additionally, pressing the tab key on the control screen will display how all the likely villains are connected. Might as well have at it! Press the tab key. Jolly good! You should see it shows Berkeley and Catherine are both potential villains and targeting villains targeting the other. Additionally, hover your cursor over a character and press tab key to view who the potential killers are for that character. No time like the present, place the cursor over Berkeley and press the tab key. Good show! You'll see it shows Catherine is a possible villain targeting Berkeley. Working with other investigators? Lastly, we may need to call upon the services of our allies. At times, combining our talents with other investigators will be necessary. Should two or more investigators not working with Moriarty command the same pawn? Alas, luck will decide whose command will be followed. Though the scope is limited, I recommend closer communication between fellow investigators. As you can see, our man Lestrade is instructing Agatha now. Now you try the same, right-clicking on Berkeley and selecting I'm commanding a pawn. Oh, okay. There we can go. I'll command Berkeley. Then understood, Simicraft Square. Good, the other investigators know that you are to control Berkeley. Do not feel obliged to follow your allies' plans, but teamwork is key. You may reply to an ally's instructions with an agree or disagree response. To do so, select either option to the left or right of the ally's communication. I say we let Lestrade know we are what we think of his suggestion. I agree. Very good. Now you are versed in the ways of working with your allies. Now I must insist you listen to my next point very carefully. Moriarty has an accomplice disguised as a fellow investigator. Meaning he will be privy to all communications between you. I highly recommend you block any individuals you suspect of collusion. Blocking an investigator will prevent them from seeing your communications. I need not remind you that doing so to an ally would be disastrous. You've been blocked, Lestrade. That concludes the most elementary aspects of your training. Naturally, the real scene of the crime will involve external considerations as well. I've gathered the most essential of those. I implore you to look them over. I've additionally prepared some training designs designed after incidents past. Such may prove useful in sharpening your inte intellect. Intellect! <laughs> you are my friend and partner in this endeavor. Together we shall bring down the evil Moriarty and bring about a better future. Okay. 
You can restart your induction course at any time by returning to this tutorial. Do not hesitate to revisit the tutorial should you have any doubts about anything. Let us not waste a moment more. Select play. Alright. Let's go! Uh, let's just do a quick match. Okay. Let's start with a 1v1. Let's see if we can find one of those. Okay. I hope people are actually playing this game. Um, otherwise, I'm not really sure what I'm going to do. Here, you know what? We'll leave. To have the best likelihood, we'll go for no preference. No preference! There we go, we're in. This is a one... No, this is a... Four-player game. Okay. So, I guess we don't necessarily know... Who's on what side. Alright. Let's go. Case number one, or something. Anyways. Okay, this is a big house. Alright, we're with Sherlock. Well, this is just great. The weather report didn't mention any snowstorm. Looks like the road has been cut off. We're not going anywhere. You must be joking. I just finished off the last of the food supplies. Oh dear, I don't suppose we could make it home on foot, could we? What is this? I vote we stay put and wait for help. It'll be a few days. A few days? My blood sugar's dropping by the minutes! I'm sure there's something left to eat. Besides, it's all warm and safe in there. Okay. Ten turns till rescue. Okay, uh... Great. It appears heavy snowfall has fallen, trapping people. They're isolated and low in supplies. It may be days. In fact, it'll be three days until a rescue team arrives. Surviving is their only option. Moriarty is hardly likely to pass up on the opportunity to murder one of them. We must influence their actions if we are to prevent tragedy. I'm able to command one pawn, Moriarty two. I've enlisted these people to help. Those who align with Moriarty. All right, just got Okay, the game is afoot. Anyone not in possession of food by the end of the night will feel weaker. All right, this goes for our would-be villain too. Okay, so who can we control? Okay, I'll... Stay alert for a green glowing indicate... Okay, that's food. Let's... Go up here. We can search. Okay, so we have like a minute on each. Um... Oh, I see, okay. So we can each command one person per round. Moriarty commands two. Gotcha. I think. So so, so I think we probably have like one Moriarty player? Okay, I'll understand everyone. Okay. Hmm. So theoretically, we should all be like basically on the same wavelength. Hmm. And no one's done anything suspicious yet. Okay, so... That's suspicious? What are we talking about? Hmm. I don't know, smiles. <laughs> uh. Okay. So let's get a feel for this room. It's... or this building. It's very large. Very large. Oh, we started a trend, huzzah. Alright, here we go. Agatha's- okay. Agatha's performed our action. Wonderful. Wonderful, I can save this for later. Agatha's obtained food! Awesome! Berkeley's performing an action. Okay. Catherine? What does Catherine do? Not sure. Dorothy? Alright, you're just investigating that, I suppose? This blade could be dangerous. I'll take it with me. Oh, oh yikes. That's a weapon. Hmm. What are you doing here? Okay. So we gotta be careful about Dorothy. We don't... She's got a weapon. We don't want to leave her in close proximity with anyone. 
Why did I even leave this an antler here? I don't hold on to it. Alright, that's a weapon too. Okay. Interesting. I see no evidence of more already overrode my command in the previous turn. Alright, thanks, Sherlock. My deductions on the commands issued last turn are as follows. Berkeley may have received their instructions from JX Knott. Okay. Ellery may have received their instructions from Hentai. Dorothy may have received their instructions from Tiki Diki. Agatha is showing signs of fatigue and can only move two areas. Okay. I want to get Dorothy as far away from everyone else as possible. Since Dorothy has a weapon. Now granted, Freeman also has a weapon, but at the very least, he is in the same zone as like a bunch of other people. So it's unlikely he'll be able to uh, murder anyone. Unless everyone moves out of the room, of course, which wouldn't be difficult. Oh, I should commit to my command. Yeah. I don't want to be the guy who's holding things up. Um... Yeah, go ahead. Jax not commanding this guy. So who did Jax not command last time? Berkeley. Berkeley didn't do anything suspicious, so yeah, yeah, I'm cool with Jax not. Please. Okay, come on, come on, guys. Let's figure out what we're doing. Huh. <sighs> Danger, gather, search. Okay, here we go. Agatha is performing an action. Agatha went back around. Interesting. This hammer might hurt someone. I'd best take it with me. Uh, what? Berkeley's performing an action. Okay, they're alone together now. Catherine is performing an action. Okay, an answer. Everyone's armed! <laughs> this is... Ridiculous! Okay, Dorothy. Get out of there. Okay. Freeman is performing action. What?! Oh. Alright, find anything to eat? Oh, nothing. Looks like the snow won't let up. Agatha has shown no ill intent towards Berkeley. Thus, if Agatha is our villain, then Berkeley cannot be the target. It may be that the solution of one may prove to be the solution of all. Okay, so... That's good to know. That's actually very good. I see no evidence more I'd overrode my command on the previous turn. Dorothy is showing signs of fatigue and can only move two areas. Yep, I did that. I'm almost ready to present the findings from my analysis of today's events. I should deduce whether our villain is within three areas of the target. I hasten to add that anyone not in possession of food at this evening's will be weakened. Okay. It appears Berkeley, Catherine, Dorothy, Ellery, and Freeman are without food. <laughs> okay, um... I want to move Freeman. Okay, yeah, you can move Catherine, sure. Let's get people out of this, like, main room. Okay, so, Freeman, what are we gonna do? We could... Is there anything to gather there? No. Let's put Freeman... We'll just move him slight. Well, no, I want to see if he's, like, close to people. We could have him gather here and maybe he'll find food. Mm. Search there. Okay. Okay, so we know... Okay, so we know Agatha can't be trying to kill Berkeley. That's all we got right now. Okay. Agatha's performing an action. Why are you going all the way back in there, Agatha? Berkeley's performing an action. Well, actually it's kind of good that there's a bunch of people in here. Lots of witnesses. 
Catherine is performing an action. Okay, everyone's gathering up. Interesting. Ah, she's found something. Gather around Berkeley. Something to nibble on. Don't mind if I do. All right, Dorothy is going further in. That's good. We'll get some good info about that. We can all we can probably entirely rule her out once uh, this day's up. Okay, Freeman, what do you got? What the deuce? Only a fool would leave this antique statue lying around. Okay, so he's armed now. Must apologize for making you wait. My thorough analysis is now complete. All right, Sherlock, what do you got? Okay. The villain is not within three areas of the target, which tells us the following. The two potential villains who might be targeting Agatha are Dorothy and Freeman. Okay. The two potential villains who might be targeting Berkeley are Dorothy and Freeman. The two potential villains who might be targeting Catherine are Dorothy and Freeman. All other characters might be targeting Dorothy. The two potential villains who might be targeting Ellery are Dorothy and Freeman. All other characters might be targeting Freeman. Okay. Neat. Pawns will now eat. So I don't think we've ruled anyone out entirely. But we know these guys are safe together, so like... If we can... Keep... If we keep Dorothy and Freeman away from the rest of the group, and away from each other, then I think we can win. 